Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? This is the Truth Seeker Podcast. I'm your host, Truth Seeker. Excited and delighted to be with you guys again for another day. Just sharing in that sacred space of gratitude, thanksgiving, long-suffering, man. Just thankful to be here. Thankful to be able to go live and to talk about what God is doing in our lives, man. What we're seeing in the spirit. And uh, hopefully today we'll get to uh, give you guys some some background info and, and some stories with someone that I used to do a lot of ministry with and who's a good friend of mine. So hopefully uh, we get some good stories out of this interview today. It's going to be good. It's a special individual that I have on today. Uh, but first, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody supporting my work via Patreon. Uh, this is a listener supported, listener funded show. Doesn't exist without your help. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to do this and you guys sharing the labor with me. Uh, you guys are co-creators. It doesn't exist without your help. So I want to say a huge thank you to some of the latest patrons within the last week or so. Shout out to Michael Banks and shout out to Courtney Roy. Thank you guys for coming on board uh, and uh, supporting via Patreon. If you'd like to support Head on over to patreon.com backslash truth seeker there. You get access to my entire discography of music. It's 200 plus songs. Been doing music for a really long time. All of the new stuff that I'm working on, it's already uploaded there. Anytime a song is done, I put it on Patreon and it's available uh, exclusively months before it's available to the general public. So make sure you check that out. You also get access to our Thursday night School of the Mystics, which is tonight. Uh, lately, we've been having fun doing some holotropic breathing and breath work and tapping into the presence of God and just getting lost in worship and having a really good time on Thursday nights. So if you're looking for community and uh, you want to tap into that, Thursday nights is definitely the place to check us out. So all of that's available on my Patreon account, patreon.com backslash truthseeker. And um, also... My new book is here. For those of you who have not had a chance to check it out, Spirit Realm, Angels, Demons, Spirits, and the Sovereignty of God, make sure you get yourself a copy of that. You can go to Amazon or just simply go to truthseeker.com and get you a copy there. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring on today's guest. My guest is my good friend, longtime homie. Uh, I've been doing this thing for a really long time. He's been there uh, close to the beginning for me, so... Shout out to my brother. Welcome to the podcast, Furman Jackson Jr. What's up, my brother? How are you? <laughs> hey, what's up? Can you hear me? Um, clear truth. Yes, sir. Okay, man. I appreciate you, man, for uh, allowing me to be on your show, of course. I'm truly humble because you've been in the field for a very long time and you're still moving on. And I'm, and I, you know, I'm going to be proud of what you're doing because some case, man, fell off, but you're still in that field, man. I appreciate you. Still doing it, man. Still doing the good work. Yes, sir. Um, That's what it's all about. Yeah, he who he who endures to the end, man. It's a race, and it's not a uh, it's not how fast you get there. It's about staying on course, right? That's true. Because not too many people can do that, and not too many people are saying that today. So it's like a lot of people that we started out with, a lot of them just man went on by the wayside. But you still going strong. Yeah, life happens, man, for a lot of people, and uh, some of them, you know, it's. I, you look at the, the you know, the, the the parable of the sower, you know, and, so, and the seeds that fell upon good ground and took root. And some of them, some of them lasted, grew to uh, to grow to st- strong trees and produce fruit. Others, you know, get choked out by the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches and just life in general, man. It, it's sad, but I trust that everybody's where they're supposed to be, you know, at any given time. So, you know, what I'm saying just trust in the process. Sometimes I feel like we got to sit down for a while. Right. Right. I agree. So I agree. 
let's uh i don't i really don't know where to start like i said i know there's a bunch of stories that we can get into i want to <laughs> reminisce about old days and doing street ministry and christian rap ministry i mean you know you we, we were linked in together and uh, promoting shows booking shows back in the day uh all kinds of stuff man so uh i want to get into that but i guess just do like a quick introduction just kind of uh, introducing yourself, letting people know who you are, what you bring to the table. We'll start there. All right, of course. My name is Furman, of course, Furman Jackson Jr. I'm from the city of Mobile. Um, been doing ministry with True. We started out in ministry together. It was like mid 2000s. Um, we were getting together, booking shows, you know, part wise, church wise, just really to uh, bring forth the gospel to the lost. That's the main mission of what we was doing. Uh, we did street ministry. We used to go downtown, Mobile, Dolphin Street, um, from like what nine o'clock to like all the way four o'clock in the morning. It was here for at that time. Uh, of course, I host my own radio show, Impact Voice, uh, which airs bi-weekly uh, around my work schedule because I work as a correction officer for the local jail here in Mobile, so I have to do it around my off days. Uh, pretty much about me, man. I'm laid back, um, just evolved with life. Um, Find a new direction, of course. Start getting older. I'll be 38 in April. April 23rd, I'll be 38 years old. So 40 before I know it. So but the main thing is just looking forward to the next phase of my life. For sure, man. And uh it's 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 been a it's been a blessing to know you. It's been a blessing to call you brother. I know we don't we don't hang out that much. We we have schedules, we're busy. Uh but I know that you're someone that uh if I need you, I can I can call you and you're there. And so uh Oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. And um, cause I know you've been on this journey for a long time. I know you've been doing a lot of great things. I know you've been you you always been that type of brother man who always constantly want to grow spiritually. Um, want to know more of the things of uh, what the Most High has for you, and not only that, just for you, but also you want it with your family, and for those you come in contact with, you know. Because I tell anybody, you know, truth is really the, the original when it comes down to marketing and promoting. True Seek is True Seek one was doing the flyers, he started doing the website, he was doing <laughs> videos for everybody. Some people may not give him props for that, but I'm gonna tell you, he was the originator of all that when it comes to promoting and yeah. marketing. You know what? And like looking back at all those times, man, of doing the gospel rap and stuff like that, like I definitely, you know, I was ahead of it locally, right? Going to have all the best merch, you know, like at every show, mm-hmm. like after the after the performance, first of all, I wanted to be the, the most crunkest. I wanted to be the most hype. And that was kind of right. like, you know, this kind of, uh, um, rivalry that we all had. It was a friendly rivalry, but you wanted to strive to be the best, right? And then, right. like, always wanted to have the merch game. So, like, that was what set me apart. Posters, CDs, like, you know, business cards, necklaces, like, wristbands, all kinds of stuff, man, with the merch game. So I definitely, uh, you know, set it set it apart locally, with uh with all my merch and stuff like that too so um but i will say man that's kind of where like even though i'm talking about that that for me for me having a to sit down for a while you know what i'm saying of of uh maybe god having to humble me and just being able to see like kind of re-examine yourself of like why are you doing what you're doing and i'll say for me i don't know how open you want to be or just even i don't, don't even know but for me it like there was probably some pride things that that got in the way because it mm-hmm. be- it became about uh, you know who's the crunkest or who's who can get the the crowd the hypest who can sell the most CDs who can you know and uh and if we're getting paid for this show you know what I'm saying we would go to and it became about money and all of those things early yeah. on th- so th- those are natural things I don't think that they're bad things right You're like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying you need to be you know because churches take advantage of you they come out here and yeah. minister for two hours to our kids and not even give you a dime you know what I'm saying so having like all of this stuff when it was new trying to process it because there was not not really a lot of people showing us how to do it like everybody was like holding on to the tricks of the trade or not telling you about shows and that's one thing that i i did that was different was i was always inviting other people i would get booked on a show and i would call everyone up Mm -hmm. i would literally call everyone because we had uh ministry and um down south safe soldiers is something that yeah. you kind of you kind of <laughs> came up with and birth and uh it was like a movement and so for me when i did a show i wanted 
70 people on stage. Like I remember watching the old No Limit videos, you know what I'm saying, 36 yeah. Mafia, Hot Boys, they had people everywhere. So my shows were like a No Limit reunion in my head, <laughs> right? Um, but other people, they would get booked to shows and they wouldn't call anyone, right? So I was always wanting all these people to, to come up there with me and, and all that stuff. And even p other ministers would see me perform and say, truth, like, why you got all these people up here with you, bro? Like, you have the anointing. These guys are just jumping in front of you. You get. I know you want to, for me, it was something of like, we can glory together. The Bible talks about mm -hmm. in Proverbs, like when you got a friend with you, when you achieve a victory, you can, you know what I'm saying? You can celebrate together right. versus going out there by yourself and, and that kind of thing. So I really always wanted to have everyone around. But um, yeah, so for me, I had to like check my heart, you know what I'm saying? And say, why am I doing this? And I just want to. And when it became about the other things and the, the the applause of men, and I understood that I was only doing it for the hand claps, and it made me it's intoxicating, even if you got a church of seven people that just applaud you and things like that. So I had to check mm -hmm. myself and and understood why God had to sit me down for a while and kind of examine myself and get things right. What about you? Did you? Because you, there was definitely rivalry there. Like it would. Uh -huh. We would like be originators with doing stuff or, or finding new venues that would let us rent the venue. And then somebody would come like snipe it out and say, OK, they book in here. Let me book shows here. And they would try to like undercut you of something that we kind of established. Uh -huh. Like there was a lot of that going on. Where were you at spiritually? And then when things kind of like I don't want to say fell apart, everybody just kind of went different ways. Where was you at spiritually with all that? Uh, the same way, um, uh, because you had at that time, um, uh, mighty breakthrough entertainment was coming up at that time. That's what, uh, Corey Penn. Corey Penn. <laughs> and, um, uh, you had him, you had money, you had a uh, church boy, you had all these guys. And, and I think people was making it like it was a robbery between us. You know, it was okay, very strange. Um, it really was because <laughs> rivalry in the I, Christian rap game. <laughs> yeah, that's how it was because, like, okay, we doing a we do a venue here, and then they, they didn't know they're doing the same thing that we done. And I think people make it seem like it was a rivalry. People don't get along with each other on this side. Okay, you had the True Seekers, you had the Boy Gospels, you had the Paper Boys, you had Tave, you had uh, Jarvis, you had um, Ty Cross. On this side, yeah, and I'm and I'm working with them. Then on this side, you had Corey <laughs> Penn and Money, Church Boy, um, and it was just real crazy. And I think, um, and like I said, that competitiveness you want to have the best show. But when we did it, we weren't trying to do it just to entertain, but we wanted to do it to do ministry, and yeah. that's what it started out at. But then all the other stuff coming to the fall, okay, want to be the next big thing. Want to make it a full time career? Yeah, you know we start thinking like that, which is not being evil, but it's just at that point, like oh, I can make a full time career out of this thing. But mm -hmm. around here, it just seemed like it was a big rivalry between two organizations. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah, we we definitely um, <laughs> it was there, and uh, and it's natural though, right? This this natural, you know what I'm saying? If somebody peeping out how you're doing things and they're studying it and they want to recreate it and, and kind of do their own thing. I mean, it's just, it's a way of a way it is. But I think a big, a big thing that set a lot of us apart was, um, which I was tuning into your Canton Jones interview this morning. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are listening, uh, Furman also has his radio show, which he mentioned, which is walking his ways, uh, impact voice. And he's now with our network as well with, uh, the encounter media network. So those of you can listen to it there. Um, he interviewed Canton Jones this morning, and I think for a lot of us, he would Canton Jones in the gospel industry was like a symbol of um, of uh, prosperity, of mm -hmm. really flaunting the money, flaunting blessings, and things like that. And we were against that. Like we, we we were definitely against that early on about the prosperity movement and some of the the there's preachers who would even fund these people uh, who have mega churches who would allow them to come in and minister to thousands of kids and we may only be able to speak to hundreds of kids just because there was like a philosophical difference or a schism within the, the belief structure of our doctrine and so mm -hmm. we were very much into the supernatural. Um, we definitely weren't into the prosperity thing. We, I had, most of us had music speaking against it. 
you know, I put out, there's a lot of my music. I'm kind of embarrassed of it at this point, but it is a growth <laughs> process that went on. But I had a lot of music that was like taking shots at the prosperity crowd and stuff like that. And so that there was like a f friction and rival factions or whatever within Christian rap w because it's within Christianity. You know what I'm saying? And you have certain ministers and certain churches that would allow you to come and, and uh, because they knew what you stood for. And so you had um, Canton Jones on again, who was a, a symbol for the prosperity. And we were more into like Lecrae and stuff like that, who come to find out they ha they separated and ha even had their own rival stuff that was not really conducive with what we were doing. So there was like factions within factions within Christian ministry doing Christian hip hop, you know, and that uh, I think it came to a head for all of us when people kind of like were growing uh, with their belief systems and doctrines and kind of ironing some things out and going to seminary and really, you know, uh, taking steps in that direction to where like people would want to know what we believe. And if it didn't match up a hundred percent with what they believe, then we couldn't be friends. We def definitely couldn't do ministry together. We couldn't be seen on stages together on each other's albums. And, uh, that's something that happened early on for us in the the mid 2000s and i'm still dealing with that today with christians and believers who you know hey what do you believe about this oh you're going to interview a guy on that yeah we can't be friends we can't i can't let people know that i know you i can't let people know that i support you it's changing but it's still there it's going to be there you know but it's definitely changing for for the, for the best so um what, what about that for you what was your perspective of uh the different doctrines and beliefs and okay you guys believe that you can walk on water and they perform signs and wonders. And we, we don't believe that that's for today. Like it became a big deal, right? Yeah. And it did because, um, you know, okay. The prosperity God was big in the mid two thousands because they feel like, okay, you had a king of Copeland, you had a Creflo dollars and all them, them cats. And they were preaching prosperity. Uh, they were thinking that, okay, you say you could be rich. So a lot of the artists that was coming up to it, like, okay, I'm supposed to be rich. I'm supposed to have the biggest house. I'm supposed to have the nicest ride, the fat bank account. And we was against that because Jesus said, what problems the man to gain in the whole world yet lose his soul? And a lot of them start losing their soul in the process of trying to gain material wealth. But if you was against that, a lot of people calling us, what, renegades, you ain't got no covering. Um, Maverick, you heard all this type of stuff from local ministers here in the city of Mobile and surrounding areas that them guys, they're, they're outcasts, they're rebe what, rebellious, I want to say. Yeah. Um, I heard the word Maverick. Um, you don't have no covering. That's a big thing. No covering. Yeah, that, that was big. And uh, by covering, they meant uh, submitting yourself unto a, a pastor and a denomination and things like that. It was really weird, and, and you know, a lot of us are still there now. There's a reason why a lot of us didn't fit into uh, certain molds and things like that. Um, you know, whether it's character defects or it's just uh, schisms in the doctrine. Like, you know what I'm saying? Especially because we, 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 we stepped it up. Uh, we were definitely given over to studying the scriptures. And my story, you know, I got involved with with the uh, Hebrew Israelites. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that changed everything for me. Um, the way I studied the Bible, they taught me how to study. They really was about mobilizing and going out into the streets. I remember the first times that we went from just preaching at churches and parks and like places that you're going to be applauded. And we would preach in these places and we'd get donations sometimes and get applauded to like, oh, we're going to hit the streets. We're going downtown to the club scene. And like you said, we will go out nine ten o'clock at night and we'd stay till like four in the morning and we yeah. would preach and prophesy against sin and uh i was connected with the gathering of christ church minister ricard cr and um the light and body of church of christ church as well uh brother rum and uh there was an urgency of uh we need to get people saved there was an urgency that we needed to preach against babylon and what was coming and so with my influence i know that it you know, I, everybody that was with me, they kind of they got brought in, whether they were watching Hebrew Israelite videos or doing their own studying. I, 
I know for a fact they wasn't studying like me, but I would teach them like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the other younger brothers who like I would study it. You would study. You definitely were given over to study and we would learn what we were called to at the time and what we thought ministry was supposed to look like. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, like I, said, I still have the apocalypse to this day. <laughs> I still have it to this day. I do go over it. Oh, the apocalypse um, for sure. 100. Yeah. Uh, the book of Jasper, you know, I mean that not, you know, you know, because the gathering Christ at that time were called when they came, when they came to me, I still, I embraced the culture, of course, you know, the tribe of Judah, of course, mm -hmm. um, they, them, them brothers, man, they was on point and they still, they still consistent to this day, of course, Ricard still does stuff on YouTube. I watch him a lot and when I have the time to do it, so I'll subscribe to their page. Um, but them brothers on point. And when they teach how to evangelize, they teach you how to be on the same same accord. Um, some even religious were like, I ain't gonna lie. Man, some of them jokes was funny, they were cussing. <laughs> um, I think uh, not Ricardo, not Ricard, no, nah, not them. I wouldn't mind say they Ricard. Ricard is a whole nother level level. Yeah. But if you had some cats that's out of New York, I think they were trying to justify raping a woman with justify well, it was years ago. I think yeah. you shared a video with me. That dumb was so funny. But um them cats, man, they were big. We ain't talking about what they was doing, but it was funny. But uh regarding them, man, they, they was on their game. And then the way they did ministry, they compared what was going on right now to the prophecy that was going on in the Bible. So but true, you was responsible for that because you was the only brother, man, that was encouraged us to learn, which I know some people did rebuild. Cause they feel like there was some type of other you no know, doctrine because of the way we were taught, but I fully embrace it and and I man enjoy it to this day. I'm showing some uh some images now for those of you who are uh, watching this on YouTube. For, for those of you who aren't, I'll try to upload these into the show notes. But I there's some images of uh us out there uh speaking. There's Furman. I need to send these to YouTube, Furman, so you can see what uh. Here's us right here, uh, my brother Anthony, me, and Jarvis. And we had those big signs too, right? Oh, yeah. The, the big <laughs> signs that we had made because I'm a G, you know, I do, the, I do the graphic art, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. <laughs> holding up these big signs with like, I remember the first one. And I feel so bad like looking back at a lot of this stuff, but it had like Benny Hinn and Creflo Dollar and like 50 Cent, <laughs> Get Rich or Die Trying, like really preaching against the wealth of the wicked and preaching against the pursuit of riches and things like that versus godliness and stuff and so um it was interesting times man we had some some fun experiences out there oh yeah there was some fun times i mean on the saturday night but they were thinking about it was men and women came up and they had questions you know a lot of them were dealing with it i think um in one of the videos one guy said he was gonna whoop somebody because he did something in a way but the guy came to us you probably remember what the guy said uh he ended up losing his wife. Got then he met a girl. He had a, like a one night stand with the girl. The girl got pregnant. He ended up losing marriage behind it, and um, he was upset about it. And, but he liked what he was doing the ministry. And I think somebody said some of the background, and he said he was gonna whoop somebody. A you know, it was in one of the videos. But getting back to the more the point of the story was, you we were dealing with people that had some real life issues. You know, people go downtown to drink, club to escape the realities of life, you know, if you, you, we could say that. You know, you're dealing with the cares of the world, you're dealing with stress, you're dealing with everything. So people go down there and have a good time to get away from their personal experience. So they all were trying to fill that void. We were doing that. We was all trying to fill that void. Um, before you came to the knowledge of Christ, um, only he can feel that emptiness on the inside. Not a woman, not a man, not your job, not your degrees, not you know, your money, not no stock, none of that stuff. And I feel the emptiness, only he can. Yeah, I'm going to try to um, see if I can share some of this video with you. Um, and hopefully it comes across. Uh, if you guys in chat, let me know if you guys can see this video when I share it out, please. Um, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think it's coming across. Furman, you can see it though, right? Yeah, I can see it, yeah. Okay, let me just try this really quick. I know, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, that was so long ago. I know. Right? <laughs> I want to try to share this out. Let me know if you guys can see this in chat, and I and again I can link some of this stuff in the um in the chat too. So 
We'll see window capture. Sorry for this, guys. There it is. Okay, you guys should be able to see that. Fireman can see it, and uh, yeah. everyone else can see it. So I'm gonna play some of this real quick. This is some. Of, this was uploaded August 9th of 2009. So check check some of this stuff out, guys. You don't believe God in these places. It's harmful to you. You better open your eyes. You know one in five people have herpes, right? Oh. <laughs> There's a lot of people in that line. How many men or women you gonna kiss tonight? One in five of them got herpes. Okay, so this in this video right here, for those of you, if, if you're listening, you're gonna have to uh, on the podcast. You're gonna have to go to the website. These two guys, they're they're drunk off their butts. They walk yeah. by hearing us preaching, and then you could see them. Uh, turn around and start talking to each other drunk off their butts. That's Furman right there. <laughs> I got the camera. I got the camera. How many men or women you gonna kiss These two tonight? guys right here. They're debating. Now they're coming back after they heard us. Stumbling drunk. Don't even know where they are. That's why it is unclean for us to fornicate and to do the lust of this world. We had a lot of interactions with the public. Let me explain. Like, I mean, you're gonna argue with me. That's fine. Whatever. But like, we wanna, we wanna see what the Bible got to say about it, man. So if it, if it, if it's a better way, no, I don't, what's like, I'm the not getting way? on YouTube, like, no, whatever, man, like, you know, get your camera off, dude, because I'm not going on there. Go ahead, pass by, you ain't got to, you ain't got to stop, yeah, you don't have to receive the message of truth, bro. No, it's not, not that, it's not that. I'm not preaching. We had a lot of interesting experiences, man, and there's a lot of people who, uh, who go out and still, and still do that, right? There's a lot of street preachers, and they, and they, and they film themselves and their interactions with the public, and and things like that. And again, you know, just talking about like in um, the Christian rap ministry, how it's always like, there were things that came in and messed it up. And I have to be 100% honest, like the one of the biggest things for me is like, I know that I had like good intentions for going out there, but it eventually came about the footage. You know what I'm saying? Of what type of footage or interactions we can get. So me being the one who was you know, most well studied, like I would study all day how to debate people and how to, if somebody brought up that they were gay, we got videos of us debating lesbians and things like that. And for any, I mean, I'd, I'd spend hours and hours and hours of watching other street preachers and, and getting all the scriptures down to debate people and tell them why they're wrong and we're right. And so it it got, again, a prideful thing of me hiding behind the camera and just trying to get footage for YouTube and to get seen and stuff like that. So you start out doing things for the right reason, but then it, it, it switches, you know, quick on you if you don't guard your heart. So that was something for me. And like most of the footage of me preaching, I deleted it, the majority of it. Now there's so some stuff with you guys, and this is like cool for us to look back on. Uh, there's mm -hmm. uh, several videos on here. There's one where we that I did leave up where we dealt with a a, a young man who was in in the uh, uh, Iraqi war, and uh, that's a deep video and it was one of the most popular videos of the time uh, where this guy um, uh, went to Iraq and Afghanistan and and they their sergeant lieutenant or whatever told them to shoot these insurgents who were on top of a building. And they all they all lit all these people up and just sh and mowed everybody down who was on top of this building. And they went up there to check the check the casualties, and it was all women and children. There, there was no no men. There was no Al Qaeda. None of that. It was all women and children. And this guy was down there drinking to forget. You know what I'm saying? And we had that run in with him, and that footage is up, and he's just crying and talking about how he was lied to and thinks that God's gonna judge him and stuff like that. So we're down there just trying to help people. I mean, people down there are just trying to feel something, man. You know what I'm saying? Or, or block something out, you know? Yeah. Um, they've done too much that they, that's the only way that they, that they know 
uh, how they can keep going and not be reminded of it is drink. But the only thing about that is like that stuff keeps coming back. If you don't find you do. true healing for that stuff, it's still there haunting you. You got to you got to bring it to Christ. You got to bring it to God, lay it down at his altar. And he remembers our sins uh, no more. He, he throws them as far as the east is to the west. And so that's the one, one thing that we found of just doing ministry and, and healing is like you got to get healed from this stuff, man. Your hurt, your bitterness, your insecurities, like you got to bring them to the cross, man. Yeah, you know what, True? We won't even hear about this type of no conversation that you just bring it up. I mean, the modern day churches ain't really tackling a lot of stuff today um, from depression, suicide, you know, all the demonic stuff that transpired in our everyday lives, you know. That's what I love about the ministry when we was on the outside. You was open to everything because people come. You're muted. Something happened. I don't know if your mic's muted or not, Furman, but I can't hear you. Not who Jesus is, and he can take all that stuff away. That's what I loved about the ministry because he wasn't looking down at anybody. Yeah, that that was the thing about and, and I say thing was about and it, it's we have to stay there in a place where we're continuing to learn. Like, um, I think what messed up is when obviously we were open, but mm -hmm. we f feel like we had it all figured out as young men right. feeling like we knew it all. And there's so many people there now, like in religion or whether it's Christianity, right? That's what we dealt with was Christianity. And we felt like we had it all figured out. And every church we went to felt like they had it all figured out. And they all believed totally different things with the doctrines and the prosperity guys and then the miracle guys and then the reformed theology Baptist boys. Like we dealt with all of that stuff and there was just these schisms and factions. But for me, like now it's, I'm more inclusive, like because of, I went through all of that stuff and all the dogmatic street preaching, it has allowed me to, to, uh, to listen more, to be open for, to other people's stories and their other, other ways of thinking. Uh, because I know that, um, first of all, I, I just, I just like the, understanding the psyche and why people believe what they believe you know what i'm saying even mm -hmm. listening to that canton jones interview i'm list that you did today like he's like he grew up in church you know what i'm saying he was a church kid he was a pastor's son like that that's not our story like you know what i'm saying we didn't i wasn't a pastor's kid i wasn't like i was in the streets you know what i'm saying so obviously we have different stories and we have different teachings and belief systems but just seeing the uh the beauty in our differences now you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Versus, oh, he believes this. I can't be seen around him. I can't be his friend. Uh, people are going to associate, you know, me with him if I have him on a song or interview him or something like that, you know. And so um, just growing from all that stuff, man. I, I appreciate it because that's the process that we went through. You know oh, yeah. Saying? Most definitely. Uh, most definitely. Uh, we live life lessons. Um Mike said just interviewing him this morning was a blessing for him to come through, um, to be open to do the interview. So that was a blessing right there. Um, my next thing, well, you know, you've been interviewing celebrities quite a while. I think you had busy bone years ago. Um, once again, when it comes to me connect, you was, you know what I'm saying, one of the pioneers of doing that. Um, I always wanted to figure out, I mean, how can you connect with big time names like that? I always wanted, I always wanted to know that. Probably the same way you did it to get Canton Jones on. <laughs> How'd you do that? <laughs> uh, actually, okay, I had one of his artists um, on the okay. show, Gabriel Willard. He released the album called God's Grace. And we connected on social media, Facebook, and um, and then he said, we know I love for you to get Canton on the show. So, oh, so he, like, yeah. he suggested it. Yeah, he did. Awesome. So I guess he let um, Ken listen to a previous show that me and him did, and Cam was open to it. I talked to his people. We were texting each other back and forth. So it came up here. So I interviewed Cam on the show this morning. And it, was, it was a very good experience. You know, he just had released an album called Power. Um, if you listen to some of the tracks, pretty good tracks, of course. Um, he always keeping up with the times. Um, but uh, back then, if you interviewed somebody like Cam Jones and Lecrae, you made it. That's how we were thinking back in the day. Trying to make it. We uh, wanted to collab with these folks. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wanted a song or we wanted to book them out and stuff, you know. And um, the concert. 
Yeah, that was that was the that was the mark right there because at the time Lecrae, y'all want to turn me on to Lecrae. I ain't know anything about Lecrae, but I know Lecrae was underground at the time. So you no, know, you and uh, Ty Cross, all me turn turn y'all turn me on to Lecrae. So Lecrae, them Chip Lee, all them were doing anything, and that was the purpose. Of everybody, I'm gonna do do a collab with them, do a, you know all that stuff. So that was the golden standard right there. Yeah, yeah, it's so funny because there were like um. I remember when Lecrae signed um, Pro, which is who uh-huh. goes by Derek Minor now, and I, I really yeah. I like I like a lot of his stuff. But uh, when he signed him, Lecrae was on uh, Twitter. He posted a tweet. He was being facetious. He was being silly, but folks thought he was being for real because he posted. He said, "Okay, all the everybody who wants to submit their music, send it to Derek Minor." He tagged pro in his in his tweet he was joking because of the influx of artists like ourselves who were worldwide who were all sending their demos and and trying requesting features like what happens when you get requests from you know 70 people a day to do a feature with you like you know what i'm saying and most of them in the church realm they want it for free you know what I'm saying? They say, hey, can you do a feature? And then they want it for free. And then the music is not up to par. They just started rapping last week. And now they're going to get Lecrae. So he was like being being funny about sending like, hey, everybody, send 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 all your requests and demos and stuff to him. So he was being funny. And I, I caught that because now I know how it is to be hit up by all these people wanting your time and your attention and stuff like that. But um. Lecrae and those guys early on, man, they showed you how to do it with excellence. And yeah, I think a lot of us, like we thought if we got those guys on a, um, uh, an, a song or a concert that it would be, it would be huge. You know what I'm saying? But little do we know that that stuff comes and goes and, you know, it's short lived and the things that we, uh, we think are going to blow us up don't. You know, and as far as even like getting like uh, celebrities or, or people with big names and followers on a podcast or a song, I've got a bunch of I got songs with all types of people. We got songs with China White. I've worked with I've done graphic art for B- Pimp C and Bum B. Like I've done so much stuff. And in your head, you're like, yeah, this is the one thing you just need one person to see your stuff or retweet it. And in a case like this now, it can it can help. But if you want to succeed and make it in anything, consistency is the key. It's all about being consistent. One celebrity interview ain't finna do nothing. Maybe if you have 20 celebrity interviews, now you're working on your catalog and they're always there. So I can look back at that. I start forgetting about all of the people I've talked to, man. I've done over 300 shows now and um, Busy Bone, obviously it's huge. I'm a little, like that changes the game for me because I'm a little kid listening to him and, you know, and now I'm interviewing him as a as a as a, a man you know and uh one of my favorite rapper of all time busy bone crazy bone and tupac like just out of this world but how did i get him um uh, I, I everything for me goes back to the scripture says you have not for you ask not yeah, and uh sure. we, we out here hoping and i hope i hope i hope busy bone hears my interview one day and hits me up or hears me on a song with so now you gotta ask him and literally i sent them an instagram message and he checked me out and said, hey, I like what you're doing. We'll make it happen. Let's do it. And called him, you know, and he called me and we recorded it and got the Busy Bone interview. And then li- literally, like, I mean, that's got thousands and thousands of, of views over the years. I've pulled it down and re-uploaded it on many occasions. But it's got thousands of views and a lot of people found out about me because of him. So if you have a bunch of those um, uh celebrities you're gonna you're gonna get people but even your seo and your keywords like topic matters so one Uh thing that i have ran into is that people just want to like they're they're subscribed for the busy bone interview they don't care about me they don't care about this interview i'm having with my good friend Furman. they only want the busy bone type content so there's those people uh so you kind of run into problems you're getting numbers you're getting subscribers but they're not really resonating with the message i think that that are people who are listening to an interview like this and they're, they're finding nuggets sprinkled throughout every interview 
uh, are the, really the, the, the people that you want uh, following your work and supporting and just being your audience and, and in turn being friends and family in the end, you know, because they really resonate with what you're doing and with the message. So having a bunch of celebrities on your show, definitely it's going to help. But even people like I'm friends with celebrities and stuff and like they're like, if you get them on the podcast, you're going to blow up. It don't work like that. You'll blow up if you're consistent. Right. You got to be whatever you do. If you want to do a podcast, if you want to do a start a rap career, if you want to start a ministry, you got to be consistent with it. You got to stick true. with it. Your your show, uh, you got Canton Jones. If, if Canton Jones came to your show and seen you had three interviews, he might not have kicked it with you. You know what I'm saying? He sure. might not have did the show, but he's like, hold on, this guy's consistent. He's interviewing uh, people. He he loves the Lord. You know what I'm saying? So all of that stuff comes into play, but I really feel like consistency is key. But you have not for you ask not. So just ask these people. Most of them are on. So most of them run their own social media and you have to, you know, try their book and agents. There's a bunch of different ways, but persi- being persistent and consistent works. Oh yeah. You know, that just confirmation. Cause I thought about that word this morning. Consistent. That just confirmation. That's you have to be consistent in everything you do. Um, there's something I was going to say. Uh, like you said with Celeste's Instagram, a lot of do have access to their own social media site. Um, it made me think about uh, remember when God talked to Moses, and He told Moses, "What's in your hand?" And He said, "The rod." And He told him to use. I'm paraphrasing. Mm-hmm. That would come with the radio thing because when I stopped doing the radio and I went back to it, it's like, "What you got in your hand?" I'm like, "I got the radio." He said, "Use it." So. It's like when I connect with people, I can talk to somebody, hey, I got my own radio show. I send the website. Oh, cool. Let's collab. Let's collab. And that's how I've just been running with it. Yeah. You got to ask them, you know, and um, and be consistent with it. And, you know, the, the, the Moses thing for real, like it's like looking at what you already have and using it. And then um, the scripture says that he who is faithful with, with the small things, I'll exactly. make him ruler over more. Again, if you didn't have you know, all of these local people on your show and, and being consistent when a big interview, which the interview was really good. I listened to it and um, I, I loved it. It was good stuff. And so you wouldn't, again, he could have turned it down or whatever. Um, not saying that, you know, we esteem anybody higher th- than another, but these are people that, you know, we've looked up to and we want to talk to and we mm-hmm. want to, to have on. And, and when they say yes, it's like, man, there's a, a confirmation there. Um, but, you know, using what you got, being faithful with it, with your technology, you know what I'm saying, with your quality, but always be looking to step it up. Uh, and then so tying all this stuff back into the prosperity thing, that was probably our biggest um, thing with them is because they never had enough. The prosperity gospel always wanted more. Once you got a, a raise and a promotion, you're still striving for the next. You want to be the leader. Mm-hmm. You once you get so much salary income, you want to get more. You want to get more. So you never it 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 never lets you settle and, and be content. What I found over the years is that, that there's a there's a it's a dichotomy, but there's a a weird balance of being content with what you have and where you are, but still striving for more being thankful for all the little things that that you have in your life, but still building, still open for opportunity and, and and expecting for more. So what would you say with that? Like, how have you, uh, obviously we, we measure success differently. And I heard you even talk to Canton today, asking him about Proverbs, talking about success. What do you want to be known for? We measure success differently. It's not measured on numbers. It's not measured on, Anything like that. Success, I think, is for us is, is measured on integrity. It's measured mm-hmm. in um, souls, people who we've, you know, won to the light and we, we've been able to to uh, introduce to Christ in some shape or form. Doesn't mean that they have to say the sinner's prayer and come into the kingdom or like just being a light to somebody like that's success for me. For you, how do you measure success now? Uh, character. Um, you know, Proverbs. Talks about a good name. A good name is better than riches and stuff like that. We can have all the money in the world, but we have a nasty character. You know, um, it's like when you first somebody hear your name, is they gonna say something good about you or they gonna say something <laughs> bad about you? So that character is important. Of course, the Bible do say, "Don't let your good deeds, oh, excuse me, be spoken of." Also, yeah. so character is everything. That's important. You gotta have that character. Yeah. I'll say I'll say with that though, like, cause again, I still deal with that when, when my name comes up, like.
like I meet people who know me. I have no idea who they are, but they already mm-hmm. know me because whatever. I was a minister. Oh, yeah. I, you know, was a big deal in Mobile. You know what I'm saying? And now people know me. I meet them like, oh, I know who you are. And I'm like, how do you know who I am? Who, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so when my name comes up, I already know that that people you know, have a, a preconceived notion about me or whatever. Um, and so they judge you. They say, I'm, I get called all kind of things. They call me a witch, all kind of weird <laughs> stuff. And I'm none of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but your character, damn a belief system. I don't care what you believe. If your belief ain't making you a better person, you can believe that there's, you know, aliens coming out of a hole in your backyard that come to bring you bread every day. I don't like, I don't care. What, right. what is your character, man? Like, what type of person when, are you? You know, what what is your spirituality? What is your Christianity? What is your Bible doing right. f- for for others and for you to make you a better person? And uh, yeah. I don't care what anybody believes. I could give a damn less. Like, I, I'll have the conversation. I'm I'm interested as far as like just the psychology behind it, honestly, um, and how it's making them a better person. Because I talk yeah. to people who. Uh, they're not Christians. They don't know anything about Jesus, but they're like, they're, they have fruit in their life. They're good people. They take care of their family. You know what I'm saying? The dog don't have to shudder when they walk out the door in, in, in the evening because the dog, if they kick the dog, the dog ain't scared of the dad. Like, there's just a character, man. There's an essence that people walk in and uh, it doesn't, I don't think it's contingent upon what type of, you know, beliefs that you have uh being a christian or, or not so that's how i judge people jesus said judge by the fruit don't judge by or they say they're a believer or they they know all this kind of stuff so that's that's for me like obviously people would say people judge you off your belief system that's a schism mm-hmm. oh he believes this he believes that he does this i give a damn it's like how what about your character and that's one said you said you you've known me and i've you know my character's always been there integrity's always been there and that's what i strive for mm-hmm. integrity is what you do when, when when ain't nobody looking any of us can get on here and have a platform and a ministry and talk about jesus all day or whatever that don't mean nothing it's like what happens when when we don't have a microphone and i think that's where most of the christian rappers and ministry goes wrong is that there was those people when them lights cut on and that they cut that microphone on and it's time to minister they jump into character it's a persona oh yeah most definitely yeah i feel god moving and like you but then you said when they get off the stage they nasty yeah what comes to mind and i don't want to throw anybody under the bus but why need to bind them i've talked mm-hmm. about this i really when when she was new on the scene i loved her ministry all about the secret place and encountering God in in the secret and in prayer time. And like, I love that. That's a big staple of my, my Christianity, you know? Um, I looked up to a lot of her stuff and then I, I had a friend of mine who worked for TBN. We have a, and for anybody who don't know, we have a local TBN here in Mobile that they shoot for all the, the major broadcasting. Now I think they have two, one is in Mobile. Um, so I had a friend who worked for TBN and I would, try to watch Juanita Bynum and tell him about, he's like, Oh, I, I don't like that lady. I'm like, why? He's like, she, uh, she, she's nasty. That's a, that's a mean lady. I was like, no way. She's anointed. She walks in the anointing of God, you know, and all of these things. Or he said, no, cause this guy, he, he was the cameraman. So he mm-hmm. was there. He had the ability to turn the camera off and on. So he got to see her on camera. What I, that's only, that's all I got to see is on camera, but he got to see off camera. And he would tell me like she's real demanding and uh, controlling and uh, demanding people to go get water for her and demanding to talk. She's talking over people, talking down to people and just real nasty. I didn't know that. I didn't con- I couldn't conceive it. There was a cognitive dissonance that was there. They would tell me, I was like, no, there's no way because she can't walk in the anointing and be bitter and nasty. But it's like, look. These people learn how to do ministry, bro. And you know that. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And so oh, I yeah, found out different. about that, man, that people were different. And, you know, you got to judge by the character. I, and so I come to the fact, like, I don't care what you're doing on camera. I want to see what you're doing off camera that validates what you're doing when everyone's watching. Yeah, and that's important. You know, and I'm you know, I'm saying it's, that's important, too, because character is everything. It's how we count ourselves behind closed doors after the platform, after all this stuff, after the mic is off, after the camera's off. It's how you really live your life uh, behind closed doors. It's how you interact with your family. 
Uh, if you're married, how you treat your wife? If you got children, how you treat your children? Um, uh, Pastor Tony Smith was talking about that. Yeah. Um, and he was saying that uh, when a man, when he said when a pastor that preacher, if you see the wife look a certain type of way, you know that that preacher ain't living what he's preaching about because your family know who you really are. Yeah. And that's when I heard him say that uh, truth. That spoke volumes to me because. Like you said, when we're front of the camera, we say the right things. We uh, know how to pronounce our words. We know, oh, well, we're blessed, highly favored. But after it's old, we're we cussing each other out, jumping on your wife, all yeah. kind of stuff. So that character is important because that's the first thing part of ministry. And we were big on that, too. If you was in ministry, you had to make sure you was living right. That was yeah. very important, too. Yeah. Um, when we started. You couldn't, you couldn't shack up. You couldn't be fornicating. You couldn't be doing drugs. All that type of stuff. We had those. Yeah, there was no about. drinking. There was no smoking. Nothing. <clears throat> nothing like that. Like if you, uh, and if we, if we knew that you were were doing that stuff, we, you know, we had to sit you down. You couldn't come get the microphone and be doing pills. Which we had to eventually run into that stuff. I mean, because we had standards like that, a lot of people wouldn't tell you when they were doing it. And I think that I was dealing with people who was. You know, they were smoking, smoking weed and stuff like that. And I didn't even know it. Uh, the, uh, there was a lot of people because they wouldn't tell us because they know that we w- it wouldn't sit with us. We did songs against it, you know, at the time, you mm-hmm. know. But talking about, uh, the, you know, the uh, the state of one's family and one's wife, not to get political, but there was uh, there's a bunch of videos that that stood out to us early on, and we were I was joking with a friend we wanted to start a movement called Save Melania, because mm-hmm. Donald Trump's wife Melania, there's a ton of footage, tons of footage of him looking at her, and she smile, and then when he turns his head, she frowns and looks down as like he's like he gives her the eye, and there's just all these creepy videos of Donald Trump, you know, handling his wife and the way she looks at him was like, hold on, something's going on. This dude ain't, this dude is, is, is not who he says he is kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? So looking at the spouse and their relationship and being able to hold a marriage together and uh, things like that. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of ministers, man, going through divorce and, uh, um, you know so that was one thing that that got me because like I wasn't welcomed to a lot of uh ministry once I started just being open about different things I was experiencing and and, and beliefs and stuff like that I guess at the time I was a little bitter but now it's like rightfully so like if you believe all this other stuff that I don't want you talking to my youth you know what I'm saying if you believe in this or that or this and that like so there is some, there is a reason for factions and schisms and don't ask him to come back kind of thing. But I felt a certain type of way because like I wasn't uh, asked to come to performances and stuff like that because of that. But other people who would show up to church with a side chick and leave their wife at home, they were applauded and like they're showing up with random gir- girlfriends at the ministries. And I'm like, how y'all will how why I got to sit down, but y'all letting all this go on. Like, cause right. I'm a, I'm an integrity dude. Like, hold on. Like something, something's going on. You can't, this ain't natural. This ain't normal. Like, you know what I'm saying? But it, it show. I think it shows like, like where our, um, I don't know if you want to say intentions, but where our, um, you know, vision is or what we allow to slip and what's okay. You know, that kind of thing, which is weird. Yeah. You know, I, I knew that early on. Well, it's not holding each other accountable. You know, that was the goal. It don't matter, okay, you be the baddest lyrical rapper, you could be the baddest producer. If they didn't know they were living to the expectation, they was o- overlooking it, you know. It was like, oh, we just pray, pray for them, pray for them, but nobody will hold each other accountable. <laughs> yeah. And that's the problem in the Christianity movement now, which yeah, that's a whole nother broadcast on the Christian thing, but... um, It was, it was huge for me because... Um you know, we did so much outreach and people would call yeah. us to do outreach and uh, we, we would do so much outreach. And, uh, but what was big for me was just what you said. Like when you had a brother who was struggling, like if I believed in things that were damnable, if I started believing in things that were demonic or whatever people were saying about me, um, if I really did believe it, then somebody needs to come correct me. 
Like somebody needs to to say, "Hey, bro, what is the deal? Why are you posting this? What what do you, what do you mean? Like, what is what's going on, man? Where did you go wrong? Show me in the Bible or whatever." At the time, I was ready to do that, Cause just like I was mm-hmm. ready to prove all of the stuff I was on the you know, street ministry. I'm ready to prove any of this far out stuff that I was believing and uh, and talking about. But nobody ever came to me. You know, nobody ever said, hey, true, bro, what are you talking about, man? You scaring people, bro. Nobody, I never had any of those conversations. And I found out that those conversations were being had without me. Like people would go mm-hmm. to shows, they'd be like, hey, man, what's up with Truth Seeker, bro? That dude, he shot out, bro. People were having conversations without me, but they never brought it to me. And that's, it, 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 for one, it, it hurt me. But two, um, it showed me that we're all, and then the, the following, th- these were happening, these conversations were happening at um, outreaches where they're going into the hood trying to recruit people into your belief, trying to recruit yeah. people into your church, into your Christianity to disciple people and build them up. It's like we're always looking for new people that we can, who are baby Christians who we can convert, but that we can't take care of the people who that we have who are struggling. So it's like Christianity, bro, is the one religion that kills its wounded. When you're struggling, you pulling people down, and you you just, hey, we kill you, bro, and just leave you. We got new people because we always got new people coming in. And so it just it blew my mind how, like, you know, we're always looking for new converts and new people to come in, but we, we couldn't take the time to, uh, and the long-suffering is one of the fruits of the Spirit, to suffer, suffer long with somebody who's struggling. If I'm believing crazy, damnable things, like, Somebody needs to talk to me. You know what I'm saying? And so, and I I say myself, it was personal for me. Now I look back on it like it's it's cool now, right? I just, I learned from that, like what to do and what not to do when I have people in my own circle who have gone, who gone off like, hey, we need to talk, bro. Like, and really, because you don't want what happened to you for for you to keep that cycle perpetually going. So that, I think that's why we go through things is so that we can learn and, and become better people. And, uh, mm-hmm. and and it has to deal with integrity because the world don't know about those phone calls. Those world the world don't know about that 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 prayer time that you spend with that individual and you trying to trying to help them. They can see you in your ministry on stage and and you know getting your applause and all that kind of stuff, but they don't see like that you have long suffering in your the fruits of the spirit. You're walking with somebody. Yeah, that's true, man. And it could be tough to any and everybody. You know, what I'm saying like you said earlier, you no. Know, you know, anywhere all by beliefs, you know, like how people just, people mentality, look at Tom Brady's of the world, you know, he's playing at a high level at 43 years old, and I can learn from him how he take care of himself physically, but he always want to get better at the quarterback position. You got the likes of Kobe Bryant, you know what I'm saying, God rest his soul. I brought his book, The Moment Mentality. So I'm at that point now of truth. I'm trying to master that uh that spirit of essence um, mentality. I'm going to say that just like, you know, it's time to be a beast, no laziness allowed. That's the mentality that I'm growing into now, being the best man that I could be, not just because of my spirituality, but in the, and as a whole man in genre, period. Yeah, that's what that's what stands at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? To have, again, I was like, how how you got the Holy Ghost, but you ain't got no integrity. It, that don't work. It don't work like that. It don't. They, they go together. But you got folks falling out. You got folks believing and having church <laughs> sermons. And they got all. And I joke. I say I joke. You got folks. And it's happening in Mobile. They're doing Sunday morning church service. But they got little kids tied up in their closet at home. Yeah. They got, it was a, a minister in Mobile who killed his wife and mm-hmm. put her in the freezer. And he and he was a minister. Oh, yeah. He was still doing Sunday morning services. Laying hands on folks praying and interceding for the lost and doing all these things. We talking about having a skeleton in your closet. You literally have a skeleton in your freezer. Like this, the kind of the, the mentality that we have with religion and, and church. And so you can keep mm-hmm. that, you can keep that bro. Like if you're, if again, like your, your belief system, it should make you a better person and, 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 and long suffering and the fruit of the spirit and stuff. Like we, we know how to put on a show, man. You know what I'm saying? And it's not about that at all. It's not because you get the applause of men. Just think about any time a scandal hit the church, it makes the church look bad. So the people of the world has an advantage over that. Like, man, y'all know better than us. 
at least we do our stuff out in the open. Y'all just do y'all stuff behind <laughs> closed doors. Yeah. Now they just like when it comes to the church world. Okay, when the world do it, the world, the church want to judge them, crucify them. But when the church do it, pray for me. He ain't done with me yet. He knows my heart. We say all these cliches trying to justify our behavior. But we say we want them witnessing the people, but we're doing the exact same thing they're doing, but we just hide. Yep. And it's just crazy. Yeah, well, it comes back down to, uh, you know, how how evil and how wicked our sin looks when someone else is committing it. Right. You do it, you struggling. God's working on you, but somebody else, it's O-W-H-H, off with his head. We threw. Kill oh, yeah. Him. You know, and so that's yeah. one thing we got. We have to learn compassion and long suffering. That's what the scriptures is about. Like Christ and God had compassion on us and long suffering with did. us and looks at us with love and looks at us as, you know, that we're still a work in progress and we should look at other people like that too. You know what I'm saying? Versus being quick to condemn and quick to judge and quick to sever relationships and gossip and all backbiting and all that kind of stuff, you know? That's true. Cause I was looking at, they're like when the Eddie Long scandal hit, you know, years yeah. back, you know what I'm saying? If you look at the report, uh, about Eddie Long case, man, them guys had all type of stuff on Eddie Long at the time that was going on. He man. was trying you to minister to them young brothers. <laughs> he was, and he made the report. I mean, you guys look at the report online, the court documentation. You know, the guy said he used the Bible to oh, yeah. justify his behavior. He got married to him. He had some type of spiritual covering to his spiritual son. If they had girlfriends or wives, he could don them for speaking to them. So, man, this is stuff is weird. This stuff is real, man. This stuff is real stuff. Because, you know, at the time, you can even question the man of God. I mean, that's the man of God. You can't question him. <laughs> but people say, this is certain, this day, is, like, that's what a man of God would say. <laughs> yeah. You can't but that's question, it. Though. Yeah. And what's the other truth that you to say? Touch not my, my anointed, do my, do my prophets no harm. no harm. Yeah. And they manipulate for with that scripture. So, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, there's truth to those scriptures, right? But um, you can't you can't uh, you can't use those scriptures to be above reproach, you right? Know, to do wickedness to people. And the the weird thing that what I what stood out with all that Eddie Long stuff with his scandal, he was for those of you who don't know, he was uh, accused of uh, being in a relationship with uh, a bunch of young guys, uh, you know, uh, uh, sending. He got caught sending provocative pictures of himself working out and flexing and to these little young guys and stuff. And so there was a bunch of stuff that came out. What I learned from that and took away was the fact that they interviewed people from the church, like the news crews and all, they were there with microphones. Hey, what do you, what, what do you think about Bishop Eddie Long scandal? Blah, 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 blah. What, what would you say? It was like, we don't care if he did do it. We still support him. It's like, I see, like that's y'all leader is out here having marital relations with, with, young boys and y'all cool with that you know what i'm saying there again we got to have long suffering we know that god's working on people but when you that's your ministry you gotta you gotta sit down you need to, they got yeah. some things you gotta work out and you know i don't he right after that he got he got stricken with cancer and he got he shriveled up and died he in did. front of the world man and it's timing the timing was was weird i never want to put a curse on anybody or say that god but it was it's very strange like right when that scandal came out he was this big like swole he was known for wearing tight shirts in the in the church right because he stayed in the gym and then within six months he was shriveled up and looked real sick and um they had to carry that man around and it was right when that scandal happened you know when you deceiving people, bro, you gotta, you do have to answer to God, bro. You got to answer to God. You can fool some people sometimes, but you can't fool all the people all the time. You got these people fooled, but you can't fool God. That's it. You know, God sits high, he looks low, and he see everything. And when he screw it up, man, he was so small. It's like wow. But then about what he was doing, he still kept going along with ministry. Like nothing never happened. Yeah. That's why he messed up. I, yeah, if he would have sat down and admitted it and confessed, but he did say something. What did he say? I know you know what he said because you told me. Uh, um, I know when he first came. Hold on, you you're breaking up a little bit. Your audio went out. Two 
check your mic? Maybe we'll Hell go. Lot. Okay, you, you're back on. So he said, yeah. he, he said, I'm not a what? What he said, um, I never said to be a perfect man. I never said I was a perfect man. <laughs> so he like okay. admitted to it without admitting to it. Yeah, he basically what he did because anybody come at you with some some type of allegations, you're going to say either yay or nay. If somebody say, I'm accused of doing this, you're going to come out and say, no, I didn't do it. I'm going to prove my innocence. But he started off with saying, I never said to be a perfect man. So when the person say that, that means, yeah, you did it. But the people are so gullible. Well, he never said he did. Yes, he did. He basically said he did. He <laughs> never said to be a perfect man. That's weird. Free between the lines. Yeah. He did do it. It's like you want to, you, you, you can't, it's, again, I think going back to like the Juanita Bynum thing, she would never, she's holy. That's a, that's a woman of God. She'll never treat people like that. And there's, there was nothing that you really could tell me at the time. I didn't, I didn't believe my friend until I seen footage of like, you know, private meetings that they had with her and her talking about paying $5,000 for a pen and making fun of people, you know, who use you know, all kind of, I just seen all this random footage. I'm like, okay. You know, and that's the thing. Like we got the internet, we got uh cell phones and a lot of these people we look up to, like there's footage of them saying what they really believe. And, and for, so me, for me, it was like, okay, yeah. You know, they're not the people they claim to be. When the camera's on, they do a good job. Anybody can, oh, yeah. can, you know, turn a camera on or grab a microphone. That was the thing for me. It was like, I got to, I got to sit down because I can, I can preach. I can, uh, I can do ministry. I can you turn that, that, that beat on and that mic. I'm, I'm a rock a show. Like, but I can't go up to a random stranger and share the gospel with them. You know what I'm saying? I can't go up with somebody in, in, who is hurting and, and, and share Christ with them. But you turn that microphone on and put that music and them lights hit me. But when them lights hit me, boom, it's time. It's my time. The smoke rises, the fog machines, <laughs> Yellow, blue, red lights come on. Strobe light in the background. We finna rock it. But you turned all that stuff off, and I couldn't hide behind none of it. And I was like, you know what? You know, I gotta check my heart and and understand like what I believe and and why I'm doing this. Because the the applause of men is intoxicating. Um, yeah. So that's I could definitely check myself in that, and I could check everybody else too, who who was like being validated by that stuff and. You know, they loved it. We do. We did love it. You know what I'm saying? When getting the applause of men is intoxicating, bro. And many it people is. are drunk, drunk from it. It is. So we don't want to be on that day when he said, um, I never knew you. The part from you were was a nigga. You remember they said, many going to say, right now, I did this, I did that. I used to rock shows and, in your name, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but that stuff don't mean anything. If the fruit don't line up, that stuff don't mean anything. And we're going to say, the part from me, I never knew you. And um, he he talking supposed to be a believer. He ain't talking to the unbeliever. That's talking to the believer. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, a lot of cats go think, man, I did this, I did that in your name. But he said, that never depart from me. Because yeah. now, true, I talk to anybody, anybody said they saved. I had some questions. If you say you say, one girl got offended. Because <laughs> if you say you say, I'm going to ask you a question. Well, I don't debate the Bible. Yeah. But if you say you say, I'm going to ask you a question. You got to be careful how you say that I'm saved. Oh, I'm saved. Okay. And then the scriptures say those who endure to the end shall be saved. So we're not saved yet. We're doing to be saved because we it's a it's a work in progress. Yeah. Um, I mean I learned uh never say never, man. You know, never say I'll never do a thing again because God has a way of uh God God is not mocked. Man, That's I'll never right. do that. And I found I found I seen it with other ministers and, and I was like I seen them doing it. And then I seen myself doing it. I remember um, the voice, Stephen, mm-hmm. and uh, he's a good, good brother of mine. But he had a dream about me that I was, uh, and this was when I was still doing Christian rap, and we were kind of getting into some other realms a little bit. He's like, man, I okay. had a dream that you were doing a show and you were cussing on the mic. I said, bro, mm-hmm. that'll never happen. He's like, you said shit or something. He said, I said, bro, I'll never wow. do that. I said, I, 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 said, I, I rebuked that dream. <laughs> and, uh, and little couple weeks later, we opened up for Little White, who raps with 3-6 Mafia. And uh, I was up there drinking at this club, and we were doing our thing, and we had some music that, I mean, some of it was like straight-up Christian rap, but we had some music that was just kind of like fun music, and I was up there yeah. cussing on the mic. And I was like, bro, yeah. you were right, dog. Like, 
I never say never. I know people who got delivered from smoking meth and now they're ministers and they got a family and and uh, they have, again, um, they're over ministries. I'll never smoke meth again. I'll never go back to that. Six weeks later, they smoking meth and left their wife and they're in prison. Mm. Ministers, preachers, preachers going out of their uh, they, they, uh, marriage bed, uh, turning in. They, they've been with a woman for 30 years. Now they got a nanny come in. A nanny comes in and they start having that eye for the the strange woman and uh and ministers trade in their wife, their wife that they've been with for years, they don't put on some weight, they don't got you know, old and they trade that wife in for a younger version and it's a minister and the and the church is like, Well, God had other plans for him and the church goes along with it. And uh, like uh, your integrity, man, like there's a time where you need to you, you gotta be checked, man. And I had to be checked. I definitely had to be checked, you know, from the yeah. things that I was doing and I was getting into and, and stuff. And I, and I have to be checked daily. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it, it shows you how power and, uh, and, and, and ruin it all, you know? Yeah. I remember, um, see now years ago when I did a speaking again with him and, um, he was speaking to this young group. He says, um, he said, like, like it's fine to this day. He says, one bad choice, I'm paraphrasing, can turn into a lifetime of pain. And all they do is takes one decision. That one decision can turn into either going to be something good or going to turn into a lifetime of pain. So we have to be mindful, of, me included, you know, of what we do, how we go about it, what we say. Because we got to realize, man, God sees everything. Even though he gives us mercy and grace, but we should always want to get it right in our own lives and get it right with him, you know, the first thing before anything. Well, I think it also ties into, like, you know, be not m- many teachers because cause mm-hmm. your, your teachers, your leaders are going to be judged differently than the regular oh, yeah, person who different. didn't know any any better. You know what I'm right. saying? So, And I think that that's where uh, God don't play is when we got to sit down. Eddie Long, you got to sit down. Ty Bentley, you got to sit down. Truth Seeker, you got to sit down. You know, Big Angel, you got to sit down. You can't keep going on. Like you gotta, you gotta examine yourself, man, and examine Thank your you. fruit. But it's like our identity is in what we do and not who we are, and that's where we run into problems. Is our identity is I am a great, the best local gospel rapper. I'm the best minister that I can be, and if I'm not ministering, like it's an addiction. I know how to do it. It's what I do. It's my life. Like a lot of these guys, that's their livelihood. They ain't finna go get a job. They're not finna be a bank teller. They're not finna go build houses. They mm-hmm. learn how to minister and they get paid doing it. And so oh, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, where we run into problems with that stuff, man. Oh, yeah. You got to think, like, if you go to um, cemetery school, cemetery, I said cemetery. <laughs> they want to say cemetery. They teach you the highs and lows, which we never did that. But they teach you how to get people in by their emotions, Sue saying, to get money. Oh, the big tide thing. Oh man, that that we was talking about that doctrine too a long time ago. The tides and Tithing. stuff. I walk a lot. I talk about it often on here. Yeah, people gotta understand what tides all about. I mean, this is this is in the this is in, in your Bible, ladies and gentlemen, the King James version. It talks about what tithing is, but you go along with the pastor say the pastor leading you astray if you steady. Tithing, tithing, what they not saying it is today. Yeah, tithing is a is a is a good principle, right? <clears throat> but uh, mm-hmm. but it's th- they tie all these other weights on it. Mm-hmm. That if you don't tithe, then God's gonna get your ass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. I'm just being and honest. That's they, God's and that's coming how they for get you. It. That's how they gonna get. It. Oh, he's well, you gonna be cursed with a curse. Uh, yeah. I'll be cursed. Yeah, and if you if you go to your morning day, um, pastor now, if you say I lost my job, pray for me. What's the first thing you gonna say? Hey, you've been paying your tithe. See, if you're paying your tithe, you know lost your job. Yep. Yeah, and we know people that that happened to. You know. Oh yeah, because I think hurt and um, struggling in a marriage, they go for prayer, and the pastor wants the pastor wants to know, are you tithing? And they said, well, I don't have, I, don't, I haven't had the money. And what happened to them? They send them away and say, oh, you're cursed. How do you expect me to bless something that God is against? 
they tell these people this is witchcraft, man. They yeah, they're talking about any anything that I got into was no, it wasn't never any more wicked, wickeder, wicked than that. Go away because God is against you, and they would send these people away until they came back with money. They wouldn't pray for them uh, because they said God is against them. It's crazy, dog. Yeah, it is. And um, I think in one church before, if you weren't paying your tithe, they have your name in red for those who have been paying their tithe. It's they a have shame. The, yeah, ones they, yeah, they, 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 tithe, the ones in red haven't been paying their tithe. <laughs> crazy. Publicly shame you. You owe. Yeah, have somebody sit down and have a meeting with you. What's the deal? What you going through financially? Why you can't pay? You know, well, they, they, I know they had that that one where they kicked that old lady out the church because she wasn't tithing. Remember that? That was on the news. Yeah. And the uh, and the grandchildren found out about it, and they wanted to put hands on the pastor. They talking about she owed, she owed you owe me. It turns into like a mob mentality, and it gets crazy quick. <laughs> now tithing and supporting what you believe in, you should. Again, I I, I liken it to. You you don't you should not support what what you believe in. I say I say you should, but let's, I'm going to rephrase it and say you do support what what you believe in with your money. If you believe in clothes, if you believe in dressing down to the T, if you want to keep up with the Joneses, what you going to do? You're going to spend money on it. If your heart is for the 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 lost, if your heart is for the children in Africa who are going hungry, you can't. You I, I've been praying for them. No, what you finna do? You finna send money. Your treasure shows where your heart is. Your treasure is your yeah. money. Listen, you like to eat out? That's where your money's going. Tell me you got a heart for, you know, the homeless. You got a heart for this. You got a heart for that. But you ain't spending no money on it. Your money shows where your heart is. And so if you believe mm-hmm. in a ministry, if you believe in whatever it is, you're going to support it. You need to have opportunities to support it. Tithing. Let these people be open. Look, man, well, y'all like this building. We got to keep these lights on. Y'all like the AC or y'all want to sit here with it? We'll keep the AC off if y'all want. And we'll, you know, but if y'all do listen, this is what we got. But no, they don't do that. They go above and beyond and say, you owe God your tithes. And if you don't pay your tithes, he's going to take it from you. Your washing machine is going to break. Your car is going to break down because God is going to get his because you owe him. And, uh, and then they'll say again, you're not blessed by tithing. Tithing don't get you blessed because you owe that. You're in debt mm-hmm. to God. You get blessed when you move beyond the tithes. Right. You have to move beyond it and you have to give extra. So not only do you give you 10%, you got to give 20, 25 or more percent of your income for God to bless you. And man, that's demonic, bro. These folks teaching this stuff. They are because um, they're not going to question their pastor. They're not going to question the leadership. You know, they're really not. You know, but that's why it's always important to take time out and study. You know, the Holy Ghost to lead you and guide you. So when this stuff comes about, you know, are you already prepared? Like, no, nah, that's not biblical. No, nah, they don't line up to scripture. But they look at, oh, they're not going to study anyway. <laughs> so we, it's like, that's the man of God's job. That's his job to study about. That's not my job. His job is to feed me. So that's what they go off. Yep. Yeah. I remember it, when we were real deep into studying and stuff, I remember talking to Tave. And he was going to a youth group of, of a large mega church locally here. And uh, their their uh, youth pastor trained them to say, everybody say one verse, one verse. Mm-hmm. It would just pull, get one verse out of the scripture and he'd do a whole sermon on it. And he would never, it wouldn't even be in the proper context. Cause we were wow. like, you know, we, we still say like, if you, if you read something, you got to go back three or four chapters before and after to really get the context of what was going on to understand it versus taking one sentence and, and applying it to whatever situation you're in. Now the, the scriptures work in that way. It's a, it's a now word for you and what you're going through. But when you, you have to get the context about what these people are talking about. I think we learned that because the tithing thing, we were told that, I mean, there's the scripture says that, yeah, I'm going to curse you. You know, you, you, you know, you're not doing what you're supposed to, but if you go back and read, there's only four chapters in the book of Malachi and, um, and each one addresses who that book was for. That book was written as a prophecy, as correction, 
uh, to a people who weren't doing what they would. This wasn't for people who were paying tithes. It was for people who was receiving tithes. It was specifically for the Levite priest who mm-hmm. was receiving the money and doing these things with money. And they were spending it on things that they weren't supposed to be. They were lying about it. They were cheating. They were stealing the, the hard earned money that people was bringing to support and pay the tithe, whether it was money or whether it was crops and things like that. And they would feed them and stuff and they were doing other things with it. And so all you gotta do is read the beginning of the, of each of those chapters. And it says, this message is concerning you, O priest of Israel. Oh, you mm-hmm. Levite priest. Every chapter addresses who it's for, but then the pastor gets up and puts inserts our name in it. This is for you, Tither. This is for you, young man. I said, hold on. That's witchcraft, bro. You manipulating the scriptures to to get money and to make it say something that it don't say. It's dark. Mm-hmm. Super dark. It is, man. It's crazy out here. Um, if you're not mine, if you're not careful, it's going to taunt you to and fro, especially with the type of doctrine that's going on today. Um, if you're not rooted and grounded spiritually. And we've seen everything fall by the wayside. Because you talk to a Christian today, true, to like with the whole coronavirus thing, you know, a lot of people have said, well, they shut the schools down and they say blah, they blah, they. And I was like, prepare, I was giving the latest scriptures on about the situation, whatever. And then the first thing she said was, that would insult her. Like, what? I had thought you with the word. I just said, the Bible said, be a hit, don't be just a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. So she took that and I assaulted her. Oh, assaulted her? <laughs> yeah. You assaulted me with the word. <laughs> but you're a believer. I'm watching your page. You're a believer. So if we both believers, then we should agree with the word and say. So it showed me nowadays. See, they say that believers, they actually don't agree too well with the word say for real. So they showed me that. I mean, I hate to say it, man, but... um. You know, I feel like a lot of these churches let the people down right now, bro. When the when the when the people really needed the, the church the most, they shut their doors. Yeah. They shut their doors on the people. And everybody wants to point at uh, you know, what's his name? Uh Joel Osteen during the flood, he shut his doors. Listen, the people need you right now, man. Folks are struggling out here. One hundred percent. They folks ready to say goodbye. You know what I'm saying? They don't know what's coming tomorrow. They think for the for m- the majority of people, they think this is the end times. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then the, and there should be some solace in the house of God. There should be some solace in the body and group of believers. But the government told them to shut the doors and they're going to arrest us if we don't. So we had to shut the doors. And so, man, when they talk about I talk to people and good friends who are like, people are going to be excited to go back to church when, the, when we can gather again. I said, no, nah, bro. Folks going to see through that. Folks ain't going back to church. Pe- mm-hmm. People like church numbers have been declining for years anyway. Oh, yeah. And now, when, when I okay. needed you the most, you was not there for me. Nope. They failing, bro. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, it's not going to be the same. Like I said, through years, it's about declining anyway. So you're not going to see how it used to be because the doctrine is wrong. And then, and also, I want to tell it to the people too, true. When um, Matthew talks about the end time, I hope pe- people got to be mindful what they be trying to explain them scriptures for real, because they try to say, oh, it's, we in end time right now. Be mindful how you explain that, because it's not terminally saying what it's saying. You got to do concept, pre-line, pre-line, concept, concept. People got to be careful of that, too, because they, they lead people astray mm-hmm. with those scriptures about the end time. Yeah, so um, I since you brought that up, I'll, I'll just I'll tell you what I believe with the end times now, as far as like where we are, like I've been, uh, I didn't know that there was a, uh, a doctrine behind this. I didn't know that there was a, a accepted uh, way of believing. I just came to this on my own studies and my own understanding. And then I talked to other people. He said, yeah, that's called this. And I'm like, Oh wow. There's other people. I'm not just by myself, like organically through study, research, scriptures, experience, all of this came to this understanding. Um, again, Matthew 24 is a huge one. Um, I, I, I believe in what is called preterism now as a, a understand the belief. And it's that the majority of that stuff has already been fulfilled. <laughs> yeah. That, you know, Jesus is Matthew 24. He's standing there with a bunch of people. He's like, look, I'm about to go. He says, this generation you standing here will not perish, will not pass away until everything that I told you becomes fulfilled. And he, there's kids there. 
you know, there's a bunch of Peter's families. He's saying, mm -hmm. look, everything that I told you is going to come to pass. And these little ones here will not pass away until everything happens. Everything, not some of it, but all of it. And then we start looking at some of the things that Jesus talked about. And literally quite after he died, like he died and rose again, all of those things started becoming fulfilled, man. Like the dead rising, you know, the dead mm -hmm. in Christ shall rise. You know, that happened. When Christ rose with all power and all authority, came back from Sheol, dead people, dead believers in the faith came out of their graves and started visiting their loved ones and preaching the gospel to them when he rose. And so we, we're still waiting for all of this in, in, the, in the church now. They're waiting for uh, persecution to come to Christianity. They're going to hunt us. They're going to kill us. They're going to cut our heads off. And they want us to deny that noble name by which we're called. Man, that's a slap in the face of the martyrs. What happened in 70 AD, 70 years after Jesus died, that generation was still around. 70 years after he, he died, you have Rome and what Rome mm -hmm. and, and encircled Jerusalem. And uh, and everything that Jesus said that. He said, look, when you see this stuff coming, head to the mountains, flee. He said, if you're on your if you're on the housetop and you see them armies coming, he said, don't even go into your house to grab your coat. Get out of here because they're coming for you. And all of that stuff happened. But everybody wants to be the people of the book. You know that. Um, mm -hmm. And so we all feel like it's going to happen again or whatever. But it, these people were hunted. For game, when they caught them, they tortured them and did all types of things to these believers. They fed them the lion. They made them fight lions and, and watch the lions. March. They did it for sport. Like you turn mm -hmm. on your television and watch football, they would come to the coliseums and watch Christians have to fight a lion. And guess who? Mm -hmm. Guess who wins? The lion. Yeah. And they were hunted for sport and game. But we're like, that wasn't the end, brother. That wasn't it. It wasn't talking about the, man. You crazy. These folks would hang Christians and have them on crosses and crucify them and hunt them down. Oh, that wasn't it, bro. That stuff that they were talking about, man, that you tell talking about Armageddon. Tell tell the, the martyrs that, oh, uh, yeah, I wasn't talking about what this is happening to y'all. These people were eating their children. The ones who listened to Christ. They fled. They seen the Romans coming. What did the others say? Oh, we're going to be saved. God's going to keep us where we are. We're going to stay here. I'm not leaving. I'm going to stay here. And when those armies came, they made a circle around Jerusalem. They wouldn't let any food in, any food out. Those people starved to death. They were uh, committing civil unrest. They were killing each other. They were eating. They, it talks about eating babies. It talks mm -hmm. about the blood covering the streets. When they came in to finish everybody, this happened. The destruction of Jerusalem, Armageddon. That's why there was an urgency. When you go back and read the Bible, there's an urgency. Hey, don't get married. Don't get married. We got to we got to get this gospel out. We have time is short, brethren. Man, that was 2000 years ago, over 2000 years ago. Time is short, brothers. And you read it now. There's an urgency because they knew the end was near. We got to get this out. They're going to kill our, our, our savior. And then they're going to, you know, it talks about the, the beast and all of these things that came in Rome and they adopted Christianity and, and mixed it with paganism and all of these things that we have now, we're like, Oh, that's not talking about them. It's like, talk, we're it's talking about us. So for me, I don't know. I know you believe a lot of that. Um, preterism. I didn't know there was a, an understanding that people believe the majority, if not all of those biblical prophecies have already happened to those people. And there's so many key things that happen. It's like blows my mind. Like what? So, I know I went on a tangent, but I know you believe a lot of that stuff too, you know, because they were persecuted and there was that they were told it's coming. Yeah. You're coming for and, and I do. You got to give your neck for the gospel and they're coming for it, you know? Yeah, you do. I mean, it's so much still true that people be exposed to now. Um, I ain't know what the word Christian means. If you look at the Latin, it, it's kind of mean naive, stupid. <laughs> if you ever look it up, the word Christian in Latin. Um, it show today people believe anything. Um, <laughs> I mean, right. you really do. Um, right. because if you're a good storyteller, man. You can you can make up anything. Preachers yeah. are doing it. Uh, leaders and authors are doing it. And I interview all type. I interview people from all walks of life and the things people will believe. Man, 
It's sad. Yeah, it is. Um, but they want to believe, love... too. A lot of them believe this stuff because it gives them hope. Yeah, it do. It's a false it hope. It really do. It do. You know? It does false hope. Um, you look at the modern day churches, that's, they they based on false hope. Sell you hope, yeah. Yeah. But it's studying sad. is important. Um, the different books, of course, the books they took out the you no, know, the Roman Catholics took the took the original book out of the Bible. Of course, you know they. I mean, God still brought it to the forefront today. Of no, no, thank, you, no, thank God for you. He used you to bring that to the forefront. True, with the Apocrypha, uh, Enoch, um, all them different books, man. Them books really, those books really helps you understand the Bible more because if you look at Genesis, the Old Testament, they give you an overseer, but Enoch, Jaster, the park gives those in in depth what was going on at that time, but you kind of remind you what's going on today also. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that you can fully understand the Bible without those books. I mean, the Bible is not one book. We know that. Uh, mm -hmm. The word Bible means little book. It's sixty six books and letters put together, like letters that Paul Paul had so many other letters that didn't make it into the cut, you know, and these were just letters that he wrote specific bodies of, of believers. He was like, hey, I see y'all dealing with this, y'all dealing with that. Let me write you this letter. I can't be with you right now. But after you read this letter, pass it on to the neighboring church because, you know, we heard that you guys are dealing with it. and other churches that were dealing with other things. And obviously, you know, he was looking out for people and, and, and it's still applicable for us today because it was for them. And, and so but there was so much more that was left out or even taken out. Um I, I like what's in the, the King James, right? I think there's enough. I think there's enough for us to really get an overview of the gospel, the redemption mm -hmm. of humanity, and Christ coming to, uh, you know, what I'm saying, save the uh, lost. And uh, like this story of of redemption is in there, and so maybe some of these books were just kind of too much far left that really was like a side mission or a sidetrack for too much that you didn't need it, but they're there. Like they were in it, the, the early believers had these books. It, it was inspired by God. It was their experiences and what they went through. Jesus even says that like if it like th there there would be not enough books on earth for you to write about all of the exploits and things that we're, we're doing and believing. So you know what I'm saying? Like, um, but they, they they show you the fullness of what's going on of the spirit realm, mm -hmm. and that's that was big for us and still is. It's like knowing the spirits that were being worshipped and why these books were taken out and things like that. And a lot of it goes back to um, Enoch and uh, fallen angels that were being worshipped and still are by the world leaders today. Oh, and we yeah. Think these people are men of God, God-fearing people. But the Bible says that they worship fallen angels and graven images. But we think yeah. they're godly people. We're fooled, man, if we believe that 100%. Yeah. So you look at it, and I'm thinking about Enoch, and, um, and I think in the book of Jaster, it was talking about that they would, no, they would. Kind of muted again. I know your audio kind of gets muted. I don't know if it's a connection or a wire or something. I don't know. I don't know, just wiggle your cord or something. You hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, it was talking about the women. Um, they put they actually made birth control so the women can keep their figures, which that goes on today. Birth control. So the Bible said it will be free, the women had to bear children. So what the, what the devil going to do? He going to do the opposite of what God will is. Yeah. So I just made birth control so the woman get on birth control. It helps them to keep their figure. So they won't have to bear their children. They look, okay, woman have a child, she lose her figure. Yeah. There's a lot of that, man. Um, it's deep. It's deep. It goes into like makeup. You know, Enoch goes into where makeup came from. And and we, we talked about this on here, bro. Like some of the stuff that these people are doing, these uh, the elite people, the people in Hollywood, mm -hmm. like the stuff that they're putting in their makeup. I did a, a, a video on here talking about Sandra Bullock. She's like, I think she's almost 60 and she looks like she's 27. Like she looks yeah. young. And um and it's and they asked her about her makeup and what she used and they kind of called her out making fun of her and she uses a makeup cream that comes mm. from the foreskins of little boys in the in the Philippines that have been um 
uh, either castrated or had their foreskins cut and ground up, mushed up, made into a cream. She uses the foreskins and puts it on her face to make her look young. And then we go back mm. to read Enoch and it's talking about how that the fallen angels came down and teach women how to adorn themselves with makeup and how to change their face and stuff. And like, you look at some of, some of the makeup stuff too. I know like a lot of times people use makeup just to like kind of, uh, you know what I'm saying, accent their, their feature a little bit. But some of these, there's videos on YouTube of like a lot of them in China where these old ladies who are like disfigured, they're, they're old, they've aged and they make themselves look like little baby dolls and stuff. And they have, so, they have like thick layers of almost like cake makeup on to make their nose look big, to make their eyes look like they're open and animated. It's really weird. And, uh, going back to Enoch talks about a lot of that stuff. And then scripture says we're supposed like women are supposed to be chaste. Women are not supposed to adorn themselves with rupees and, and doing their hair and all of this kind of stuff. Not even supposed to have their hair shown. They're not even supposed to show your hair because of the angels. When you pray, they, the angels are able to see that and it entices them. That's some deep stuff. Yeah. Now, whether you believe this is true, if it's for today, listen, the ancients believed it. The ancients believed this stuff was true and it talks about it in Enoch and it was, that stuff is in the Bible for a reason, I believe. And it even mentions yeah. it that women, you know, are not supposed to pray with it with their head. It's two things. Women are not supposed to pray with their head uncovered and men are not supposed to pray with their head covered. Mm -hmm. If you have a hat, we were big on that. We, we took, we took it, you know, when we was doing ministry, but we took it, the Bible at its word. Like if you, and a lot of old school people still do. If you praying with your hat on, you got you got to take the hat off, man. Your prayers are hindered. Yeah. And you know people talk sure. talk to like look down and close your eyes and look down, but the Bible says look up and lift your hands up. Like we, like there's a lot of instructions in there that have been lost due to you know Western Christianity and what we call. I think they are, I think there's spiritual principles behind it all that's applicable, man. It is. I mean, I'll tell you today. Uh, if that's done away with, you know, that's first thing they to say. That's the old testament. That stuff is done away with. We're a New Testament church, and it, we can't do our own thing, man. God the same today, yesterday, fell more. So we can't do our own thing. It's not gonna work. His will is still gonna prevail. So none of that stuff we think is right ain't gonna work. Yeah, a lot of that stuff. You know, I, you know, the, the holidays. We're celebrating Passover right now, but the world is celebrating Easter, you know, in a couple of yeah. days, you know, and uh, oh yeah, making up holidays. And we were big on that, dude. We I stopped doing, you know, I stopped doing Christmas and any of the pagan stuff for like eight years, bro. You know, we stopped eating pork, we stopped eating shellfish, and eating kosher and stuff like that. Um, I took it very seriously, you know, and you know we were mocked and scoffed and laughed at, which is what the scriptures say what would happen. You know, if you do those things, but, um, you know, it's crazy. Yeah, it is. And then you think, and the hurtful thing about it, true, when you talk to other believers and you think they believe the same thing you believe and they don't, that's the hurtful thing. I would say hurtful, but the very discouraging thing. Like, you say, you say, we should be on the same accord when it comes to this, you know? Yeah, I'm, that's I'm in the a, um, just because we, I think we come to find out that uh it's pretty much different religions <laughs> within Christ it all is. the denominations just because somebody uses the bible they man they believe they don't even believe nothing like you might not i don't and i'm pretty sure you don't i don't agree with the majority of of western christianity and church thought the majority yeah, of it goes against the bible it is it anti-christ like you know but it's accepted as the norm um I, I, yeah. I, I still call myself a Christian. I call myself a believer because I'm a, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ and, and what He did mm -hmm. on the cross for, for my sins. And you know what I'm saying? He won, He won me and bought me with a price, which was His blood. He was the perfect sacrifice that bridged the gap between me and God. So uh, that's right. about the only thing I have in common with with Christianity. You know what I'm saying? Of the West, anyway. But mm -hmm. Christianity, you got to look to the East, bro. We got to go back to the East. Can't look at what yeah. we got now, thinking that this is. Because when we read the Bible and then we look at the modern church, we're like, hold on, something don't add up. <laughs> we can't, can't quite put our finger on it, but the more study and the research and all that stuff, you start finding out what happened. Yeah, dude, because Sunday, 
is the first day of the week. You know, Sunday is not Sabbath. You know, the Sabbath is on a Saturday. You know, it lets us know. You know, a lot of people think that's been done. Oh, that's the Old Testament. That's un- No, that's under the law. No, it, it still stands. Remember, in the New Testament, Jesus said, don't think that I come to destroy, but fulfill. Yeah. It still it still goes on the day. So I don't do Sunday worship. I'm just gonna be I don't do the Sunday worship. Um I do one Saturday. Um I I don't do the port myself either. I don't do the pagan holidays. Um I'm at the point learning about the day that we are supposed to celebrate, like the Passover, the lavish bread. Um we got holidays that day that God ordained for us to uh celebrate. They are in the Bible, of course. But like I said, the um modern day christianity they said that's done away with that's crazy but if it takes being with myself and take and happy for myself they just make up new holidays throw out the old oh, yeah. ones that we have and make up new ones oh yeah um past the anniversary uh <laughs> anniversary. family and friends they all this stuff is not biblical it's not uh youth day all this stuff is not biblical um ladies and gentlemen well, let's go back to the Bible. Let's go back to the blueprint. When we go back to the blueprint, we, we're going to be blessed because he's going to honor his word. That's how we're going to get blessed when we become doers of his word. Yeah. Yeah. When you believe, man, uh, that was the thing for me. It was like, you know, being told that we're cursed by all of these different pastors about tithing and stuff like that was deep. Like, like you know what I'm saying, psychologically, like they train you to believe that they train mm-hmm. you to believe that you can't disagree with the pastor you know all of these things then i started kind of doing a word study study on on the word blessed the book of psalms says i'm blessed simply because i believe you know Mm -hmm. uh, like then then like recently it was so powerful going back to the beatitudes blessed are the poor in the spirit blessed are the peacemakers blessed is this blessed is that hold on like going back and, and understanding what god says about you versus what people say or religion says and you find it's like night and day his thoughts are continually on us and he has a plan to to bless us and to prosper us and you know to keep us in good health and all of these things that if we if we believe it yeah i think um years ago true right now you shared years ago and um a lot of people are going to be doing ministry at home that they weren't going to be going to the buildings their building they were going to really be coming together at home i think you said something like that years ago yeah Exactly. And it's so funny you said that because my friend Christy Johnson here just posted a scripture. She says Acts 2.46 said that they met every day in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. Mm-hmm. The church started in the house. And then especially when Rome came, and which was this institution, it went back to the house. And uh, that's where it started. That's where it's going to end, in the house. And guess where believers are meeting now more than ever? The house. House church. Yeah. I got born again at a, at a prayer meeting at somebody's house. I mean, it was just kind of like the groundwork. Like I've been big on, you know, house meetings, and you've you've been to many house meetings that we've held and men's gatherings and things. And it's different, bro. You've been to a lot of these churches with me, man. You experienced a lot of this stuff too, and you've been here since day one. So it's awesome to have you on to talk to you and reminisce about some of these stories and beliefs and stuff like that. And then again, still being here. Um, to talk about it again a lot of people you know f- fell by the wayside or you know get, just get caught up with life you know yeah and i appreciate you for having me on your podcast um i know you, you know we'll talk about getting together and having me on the show and of course being a man of my word it did come to pass today of course so i appreciate you for having me on your podcast for sure man so uh again this gonna uh go ahead and give out the, the links where people can check out your work um uh, Furman show is on our on our network now as well. So we he's if you type in walk in his ways, impact voice, you'll be able to find that. And so your your shows are, are going to be streaming on our network as well. But for those who want to go to your website, you got some really cool merch. I've been designing merch for you for for and logos and stuff for years. And you've got a bunch of shirts and stuff available too, which are really cool. Some powerful sayings and phrases that the Lord gave you that we turned into shirts. So go ahead and plug all that stuff right quick, man. Okay, of course, what, of course, True City did design the website for me, so you can go to www.walkinhiswaysimpactvoice.com. Check out the website. You can check out past episodes of Impact Voice. Check out the store as well. Uh, I just had 
know, Truth designed a new shirt for me, dealing with false pride. I thought that, that shirt is so cool. <laughs> um, the word pride is phrases on that. So check that out. Um, like I said, um, I'm also on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I love to connect with you. Um, love to hear from you. Um, and I have a young lady out of Milwaukee. She's a gospel artist out of Milwaukee, and she's a book artist. I'll be interviewing her tomorrow evening. Uh, I think you might cut out again. So, um, but I got I got your site here. It's Walk in His Ways Impact Voice, and so uh, you can go to go to the website. You can look him up on iTunes and all those kind of places as well. Furman, thanks for coming on, hanging out with me, man. I really enjoyed it, bro. I enjoyed it too, man. Be blessed. Keep doing what you're doing, bro. For sure. You too, brother. Many blessings. Be blessed. All right. Peace, peace. Peace. Furman Jackson Jr., ladies and gentlemen. Good friend. Uh, like I said, he's, man, I would say he probably came into my life around 2004. Probably around 2004. And so we did ministry early on together. And um, I used to book shows and Furman would book shows. And um, we've got, I've got a ton of footage, man. I need to, I should have played more footage just so we can reminisce and stuff. Like um, most of my old stuff, I ended up just taking it down off of uh, YouTube just because like, people like associated like that's where I was and that's what I was doing but we got a ton of uh um footage if I can find some of this here I might be able to play something else of of um let's see I don't even know where everything is but uh events that firming through <clears throat> yeah here's some here so let me see if I can and I just it, I should have played this one with him still on. He's probably watching. Let me uh, share some of this. And for those of you who are um, uh, listening, you'll be able to hear some of it. I'll kind of explain some of it. So let's see. Uh-oh. That's not it. Give me one second. I'll make it happen. I have to go to. I'll just go to display capture. Why not? Boom, right there. This is an event that we did years ago. What's going on, baby? It's hey, truthseekermusic.com. Believe that? Yeah, you have to dress like the good reverend over here. The Bible says, if you spell a raw, just born a child.
on your own, with your own things, your own imaginations. And that's what we see Cain, when he, he uh, had his own offering, what he wanted to offer to the Lord, something that he made up, something that he did. And many people are trying to offer this to God with a wicked heart. But the Bible lets us know that there's only one way that we can get to heaven, one way to know the Father. We said it in the song, Ahaya Bahashem Yeshaya, the Messiah lives inside. There's only one way to know this God that we've been rapping about, and that is through his son, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Now most of us here, the majority of us here, are, I'm sure, are believers. But we want to open this up that if you do not know Jesus Christ, if you do not know this God that we've been rapping about, that we've been singing about, that we've been praising about, that we've devoted our lives to, that the opportunity is open for you tonight to understand that you're a sinner and that the only way for you to get to God is not through Muhammad, not through Allah, not through Buddha, not through creation science, but to get to God His way or else you're living in the vanity of your mind, right? There's only one way to get to God, and that's through Christ. Us believers know that. Throwback, y'all. That young man preaching on there, man. Foundation, man. Look, thank you guys for hanging out with me. If you want to check out some of this music and stuff, I, I don't know if I should do another channel or put it on Patreon. Maybe put it on Patreon. That would be a good, because I got so much footage i think that'd be something cool for patrons to check out i got all types of footage let's see here if we look here's a folder with a bunch of stuff like um let me just play, play a couple more what well, that's the one i just played. what's going on baby hey true music i was praying that i was talking to the father just like just a couple weeks ago the lord put a story on my heart and put a fire inside of me for got back and they was and you get three people, you get three people, you people. The Lord wants you to stand tonight. Will you stand? Will you stand? Look, I don't do that. I'ma stand for God. I'ma stand for what he said. That's against the Bible and I'm not going for it. He wants you to stand. He's not looking for you to do all this crazy stuff. He just wants you to stand. And I'm going to tell you that if you will stand, if you will not bow your knee to the gods of this world, to the cares of this world, if you will not bow, there is somebody standing with you in the midst of you. One like to the Son of God, whose name is Jesus Christ. He is with you. The Bible says that the Lord will be your rear guard. Uh-oh, good stuff, y'all. Y'all check it out. I, I might put some of this up on Patreon. Y'all let me know in the chat if you think I should. Um, good times, man. Good memories. Christy says, so ghetto. Yeah, I had to learn how to not be ghetto as much. And I'm still ghetto for sure. I can't hide it. It still comes out. But uh, I've gotten better. <laughs> so I didn't I didn't have my voice that, back then as far as like, I mean, it was a different stylistically of the music that I was doing and things like that. But I definitely come uh, a long way. Um, with with the music and uh, ministry and compassion and long suffering with people and so the message hasn't changed the message is still Christ crucified man that love became a person and dwelt among men and uh and when he came down here for some reason we killed him we didn't want it you know we crucified him but it was the the very thing that was sent to save us we didn't want as a people and I think that 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 message is still valid today and it's still the essence of of why I do what I do so man if you want to check out some of this older stuff let me know I may put it on Patreon again just to have it there something special but uh yeah thanks for hanging out with me really enjoyed this episode uh Furman is a good brother man somebody who I can call friend he's been there uh from the jump and he's still there today and so shout out to the long suffering and uh friendship that I've had with him um make sure you check out his podcast he's interviewed a bunch of really cool people as well so with that I'm gonna say uh peace and shalom man thank you guys for hanging out with me if you want to support go to patreon.com backslash true seeker Thursday night which is tonight we're going to do the school of the mystics. We're going to tap into some breath work and engage the father through the breath. The word breath in the scriptures translates to spirit, the spirit, the pneuma, the life force of God, the essence, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit of God, which is the breath. And we're going to engage God that way. If that sounds like it's uh, interest, interesting to you, you want to uh, tap into that and get into his presence. Check us out. Patreon.com backslash. True Seeker Thursday night, School of the Mystics. Peace, peace.
that does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.